A few years ago, I went to the BC Small Business website, a service offered by my provincial government. Or, as some might say, a vanity project designed to let you know what your government does for you. They offered advice geared to people starting up a new business, on the advantages and disadvantages of common business structures for someone starting a new business. The advantages and disadvantages were taken straight out of an introductory business law course. They weren't really wrong, it's just that they lacked context. And the Small Business BC website wasn't the only online content available. A search on May 17, 2023 found 242,000 hits over the last year. It seems that many advertisers want to connect with people starting a business. At The Hatchery we also serve the small business sector. So we put together this set of three videos. Each one is devoted to one of the three most commonly used types of business entity. First, let's go through the advantages. 1. Limited liability. 2. Possible tax advantages. 3. Specialized management. 4. Ownership is transferable. 5. Separate legal entity. 6. Easier to raise capital. 7. Name protection. While the notion of limited liability protection is usually given as the key reason for incorporating, it probably isn't all that important. A corporate structure may offer some protection, that is mostly true for investors in public corporations. An owner-manager of a new corporation can be held responsible in her capacity as a director. That is why many corporations purchase director's liability insurance. If your corporation is looking to finance the purchase of equipment, you will likely be expected to offer a personal guarantee to protect the lender. Most banks will require a personal guarantee for any small business loans, or will encourage you to pledge personal assets in support of money lent to your business. There are some tax advantages when it comes to using a corporate structure. These include the lifetime capital gains exemption and certain incentives for research and development for companies producing video games or mining exploration companies. While owners of smaller, Canadian-controlled private companies will eventually qualify for the lifetime capital gains exemption, first you have to build a valuable business. At startup the focus should be on building that business. You need to remember that a business structure can be modified in the future to meet future needs. The Income Tax Act was designed based upon what they call the theory of integration. What's meant by that is that however you earn income by salary or by dividends paid on after tax income of corporations, the amount of tax paid will be roughly equivalent. The idea that a corporate structure is better for attracting specialized management doesn't make much sense. If you were intending to hire a corporate finance specialist, that would be true. But a new business is unlikely to need a corporate finance specialist for many years if ever. It is probably easier to transfer shares than it is to transfer the underlying assets of a business. However, most purchasers of small businesses will prefer to buy the assets than the shares. The reason is simple. A small corporation may have what are known as skeletons in the closet. Inevitably commercial lawyers seek to protect purchasers by buying only the assets their clients want. In this way they can avoid taking on hidden or undisclosed liabilities. This is not only safer for the purchaser, it's also safer for the lawyer. So what is the value of having a separate legal entity? A proprietorship and a partnership are separate business entities. The distinction between a business entity and a legal entity is probably more important for lawyers and the tax department than for business owners. Each separate entity requires a separate tax filing. But that may not be an advantage, except maybe for your accountant. Easier to raise capital? Who wrote this? Raising equity in a small business, no matter what structure is used, is very hard. Regardless of what structure was used, if the business is successful, the structure can be modified to suit investors. We'd agree that a corporate entity is better and simpler when it comes to name protection. However, the name protection may only work in the jurisdiction your corporation was created in. It might not work if you're hoping for world domination. Now, let's go through the disadvantages. 1. Closely regulated. 2. More expensive to organize. 3. Charter restrictions. 
4. Extensive record keeping. 5. Director's liability and personal guarantees. From a lawyer's perspective, a corporation may seem more closely regulated than either a proprietorship or a partnership. There is a requirement that the corporation files an annual report and that an annual general meeting is held. However, for small, sole shareholder companies this can be accomplished quite easily and inexpensively by your lawyer. When companies try to file their own annual reports, this can result in a bit of a mess. It typically isn't a big problem until you try to introduce new shareholders or sell the company. Then you'll probably need help from a lawyer to do remedial work. We would argue that a partnership can also be closely regulated in terms of tax compliance. If your business involves selling cannabis, medical devices or items for human consumption you will be subject to regulation. Also if you intend to employ people to help, you'll have to be aware of employment standards and understand the difference between employees and contractors. These things are true, no matter what type of business entity is involved. A corporation is generally more expensive to organize than a proprietorship. But we'd argue that a partnership can be just as expensive. A corporate charter, also known as the Articles of Incorporation, is a written document filed with the Secretary of State or Registrar in Canada by the founders of a corporation. It details the major components of a company, such as its objectives, structure, and planned operations. Since the founding shareholders have control over the charter or articles of incorporation, they can choose to be restrictive in terms of objectives, structure, and planned operations. This is probably of greatest concern when buying or selling a corporation which is subject to restrictions. The record-keeping required for a corporation is certainly more extensive than what's required for a proprietorship. However, partnership record-keeping can be just as onerous. As we said previously under advantages. While the notion of limited liability protection is usually given as the key reason for incorporating, it probably isn't all that important. A corporate structure may offer some protection, that is mostly true for investors in public corporations. An owner-manager of a new corporation can be held responsible in her capacity as a director. That is why many corporations purchase director's liability insurance. If your corporation is looking to finance the purchase of equipment, you will likely be expected to offer a personal guarantee to protect the lender. Most banks will require a personal guarantee for any small business loans or will encourage you to pledge personal assets in support of money lent to your business.